start recording now for the AMA with the Peak B team, the Peak Projects team. Uh, representing is uh, myself, Jarvi, and Asgarth. Asgarth, do you want to say hello and uh, let them hear your voice and so they know? Uh, and no, thanks for inviting us. Okay. Yeah, like I said, um, I, well, I was saying earlier to people listening, I'm in uh, Utah, up in the mountains, beautiful fall colors, it's amazing. Uh, Asgarth is over in Italy, he's Italian, he lives there and is an amazing programmer. He actually started Peak B, this was a few years ago now. Uh, we both were way into photography, interacting on um, the blockchain, doing a lot of photography things, and then he started up, uh, at that time it was Steam Peak. Um, which is awesome because obviously I love mountains, <laughs> so peaks are fun. And then we just uh, work together. There's a few people that have uh, come and joined the team and come and gone, that sort of thing. And we are here continuously pumping out new features. And we have ourselves a list of topics. I'm gonna run through them real quick. If you are live right now um, on Discord, there's a channel AMA text uh, that you can uh, continue to ask questions. I have listed a spreadsheet image. Um, we plan on doing a post afterwards and hoping to add the audio to this all as well. But the topics that we have are we're gonna answer questions about the mobile app, about um, just a quick how-to someone asked. It was fun to have a, a specific how-to question, um, which we can do real quickly. Someone asked about if we're gonna do a peak token uh, in general, some three questions about marketing plans. Uh, it, similarly, questions about growth, retention, onboarding, uh, analytics, uh, user data options, a, a very specific or technical question that we'll answer really quickly. Uh, the DHF, which is the Decentralized High Fund, a question about that. Some business plan questions. Um, uh, like a, the topic of the most viewed algorithm that we just came out with. Um, some other interesting questions, like who's the ideal Peak D user and uh, open source, and, and some more like feature-related things, like messaging, the promotion features, ads, and, and, and user lists, and search. And there's a couple more, but I think we should be able to get through them pretty quickly. Like, um, I'd like you guys to know that if we're on a topic and you have a question, I am sure that me, I know that I am on the Discord looking for related questions to what we're talking about. That sound good? Um, assume everyone's hearing me fine. Uh, I'm trying to talk loud. My microphone isn't directly in front of me. I don't have an extension for it. Sadly, it broke. Um, and I moved my computer spaces. Right now I'm talking directly into it, but I do have to look at the screen as well, so I'm not talking to it as much. So. Um, if that's a good introduction, we're going to get started. What do you think, Asgar? Are you, yep, you're still there. You're just not first alphabetically anymore. Okay. So, let's start with a question about mobile app. In the actual, there's two questions. Dalz, D-A-L-Z, asked mobile app, question mark. And Nikki, Nick Havey asked, will you guys be developing a dedicated mobile app for Android and the iOS? Thank you for letting me know that you guys hear me loud and clear. That really is comforting to know, um, even with these issues. Okay, so mobile app. I will give my two cents. We're going to get a little bit of uh, what Asgard thinks about it as well, because he is the developer. We would love, love to do a mobile app, and we are planning to do mobile app, and we want to do mobile app, and even I know that Asgarth is excited to do mobile app, it is a very large feature to do that would take uh, a long time. My worry is going all into it right now um, takes away from a lot of the features we still want to do. Keep in mind, our task list of all the features we wanted to do, hundreds and hundreds of long, is now, it's, thankfully, it's, we've decimated that list. We've, we've done so many of those things 
but there are still a few things I'd love to get in there and perhaps get in there before mobile app so that when we develop mobile app, they are in there. Now we'll, we'll always be developing features, but these are some of the ones that are just like, I need these, we need these as a community. That's part of my answer to the question. The other one is we would love to develop things simultaneously. If we could get someone else to build the mobile app at the same time, then we could be doing both things at once. And we have funds for it, but we don't have that developer. So is it going to end up being Asgarth or can we find a developer and we don't have crazy amounts of fun, but we do have a decent amount. So that I'm turning that question back to other people to you guys. Do, is there anything, is there a way we can be, uh, you know, do you know someone that's really capable that won't take more time away from a developer? Um, you know, someone like, oh, answering, if Asgard just has to answer questions and fix things nonstop, then he might as well just do it. Any other uh, thing to add to that, Asgar, on the first question? Which I know is a very important question to many people. Yeah, I think it is uh, an important topic. And uh, from my point of view, doing the mobile app is something that will take quite some time. And uh, probably it's better if we start working on that when we have a good experience on the website. So we can just focus on replicating the experience the mobile app. If we just start doing the mobile app right now and we want to change it later, we, it will take more work. So it's probably easier to do it uh, just one time, do it well, and uh, when we have everything uh, working as we want on the website. And while we are trying to make the website uh, easy to use on mobile, so it's, it's uh, a trade-off that we are doing right now that hopefully will give us the ability to work on the mobile app and to focus on the mobile app once and for all when we are ready. And also I don't have so much experience with mobile app, so it's something that I'm trying to figure out how to do the best way and uh, having some help will be great, but also we need to find someone that can work with the technologies that I can uh, understand. So it's possible for me to help and to work on it also if the other developer leads the project at some point. So that's why it's taking uh, a while. And also I've seen some uh, concerns in the comments under the, the post because uh, mobile app can be removed from the store and uh, that's something that we cannot, uh, uh, that there is not much we can do about it. So from my point of view, I, uh, I would like to develop a progressive web app. So it's like a, a similar to a website but running on the phone and of course designed for the mobile usage. And we, we, it will be available on the store, but we, it will not be the only way to get the app. So it's probably easier to to share it and uh, use it also. It's not uh, optically uh, available on the Apple Store or Play Store. We do have a few Hive-related apps out there that are on uh, that are mobile apps that are available. So far, they've remained I guess um, but the issue is once we get larger and larger do they keep us there and to what extent blockchain can be involved you know do we have to remove some blockchain type things from it that sort of stuff um, Patrick asks what are the language you prefer the mobile dev to be versed in so we can bring referrals to you guys that's my question to you Oscar. Uh I think that this will be easier can work with the uh, app because that's what we use on the website and it will be easier for us to share part of the of the code so not sure if uh, this is the question and uh, so also I would like to have the, the 
they are trying to join the developer. Okay. All right. So we're going to move to the next one, which is a quick one, just kind of a how to SGRV5. My sister asks, How do you find a community? I posted about gardening and would like to connect with that community. I think she's asking this question because she posted a post today regarding her gardening. I said, you really should add that to a gardening community. There's got to be one. So she, I guess she asked the question, how do you find that? And um, uh, basically, I'm going to record this. So hopefully the video should be available. But I'll walk people through this. You basically go to the top to communities and click all communities. And then you go to the communities up at the very top of communities page, it says communities, high powered communities. Um, you can just type in gardening. Um, and then hit enter. And then we hope that there's some gardening ones. There's a agricultural mindset, our gardens, garden, theme park. So there's three of them that kind of really talk about gardens and they're the, the agricultural mindset has 316 users, so that first number that you see next to each of the communities is how many people have subscribed. And then you have um, six, what's the six represent? I'm trying to remember. Six interactions. So it's not a heavily interacted um, uh, community. So maybe, plant, and I guess you could type in plants for the community. Succulent growers. There's 34 interaction and 50 people. So do you want the community that has less people but more interacting? Or the people with more users and less interacting? Uh, I guess you could subscribe to both of them, post it, try posting in each of them, or go to the community and see, like, oh, uh, there's a post two days ago, four days ago, eight days ago. So a few posts in there. It doesn't seem too bad. Uh, so this search basically searches the title and the description. Uh, the hope in the future that I would love to see is for each community owner to be able to embed like three, four topics, three, four topics for their community. And then we could also search those things. And we can also categorize communities by those. So there's a lot more that communities can do. So. I let that um, question kind of lead towards some other things as well. But I love to, we want to do more of these Ask Me Anythings. Um, these sorts of questions, even like how to's, are fun and they lead towards things that you may not have known. So, uh, again, on the Discord, if you have any questions related to the topic at hand, um, ask those while talking about it. And if not, we're going to move to the next one, um, which is peak token is the topic. Bows asked this, are you planning to introduce a peak D token? And uh, the answer is no. We don't have any plans for that. <laughs> um, but my question to everyone else is, what would you see it doing? Like, what's the use of a peak? We, don't, we have nothing against it, but we don't have anything that really would really motivate us right now. So what what do you think that would be? Our, we want to get people viewing great content. We want to um, bring, like we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit later. Oh, marketing plans is the next question. So we'll kind of move into that one. So, But I'm going to go to that one too. We'll keep it moving along. Marketing plans. There's three questions. I can't remember who the third one was. Whoops. I forgot to write your name down, but Injar and Hype Trending. They asked respectively, do you have any plans to be running advertisements that grow Peak D, such as on Braves? Um, I asked them a little bit more about it. I guess it was, he asked these both. I asked them a little bit more about it. He said, yeah, basically my question is marketing plans in general. And then Hype Trending asked, Thoughts on advertising or similar efforts to attract new content creators to the DAO. So, this is another big uh, question. <laughs> um, and it's something I'm excited about. Uh, we have done no marketing 
Well, be upfront about that. And we have done, done no marketing almost on purpose because uh, the next, you know, one of the next questions down is retention. We want to prove retention and we want to, we have a specific, a specific um, market in mind that we would like to approach with a few different uh, marketing projects. And um, we feel like there's still a few things missing and that I, I, for example, know, I have a lot of friends that are YouTubers. It's not, a, you know, like I've talked about this in the past. I've done surveys of them in the past. And I would not want, someone's trying to call me. Okay, I would not want, um, them to come in and not be fully satisfied and then leave. What's the point of a big YouTuber with millions and millions of followers coming in and then leaving? That's like the worst scenario to, in my opinion. So I want a really good experience. I want to test out with a few of them. I'll be working hand in hand with a few of them to start off with. And we're just always getting closer and closer. So, um, and, uh, so that's part of that. Um, they asked specifically about running advertisements and that isn't on our, on our, um, drawing board, I guess you would say. Uh, because I mean, that's a decent amount of money and we'd rather spend the money on improving the site and then doing some uh, of this, I guess we call it guerrilla marketing, where we're working hand in hand with people with millions of users and, and specifically listening to what they need to, f to put their attention and their time, because they're putting their attention on, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, and now TikTok, like what would make them want to put their time and attention there? And can we perhaps help them at the beginning um, with some helping, you know, do some of the work with them. So, anything else you have to add to that? Anyone else have any questions regarding that? Growth that we see right now, um, I was going to look at that. The, uh, The growth, let's see. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of growth. We have seen, well, in one way we have. Um, I'd say our biggest growth started, uh, there was a big spike back in, uh, in mid-July, but it's been pretty consistent. Consistency is great though. Consistency is awesome. Um, but we do, we did have the Hive onboard project where people can sign up quickly and easily and our our site our our account has sponsored over or referred over 500 different users um, and then you ask about retention I don't know exactly like there's things probably that can be done to see who these people are where they come from and what they were expecting and why a lot of them aren't commenting maybe they're just name squatting, maybe it's a lot of you users that are like, oh, Hive on board is offering one, basically one free account to each phone number, so I'm gonna grab one. But there have been, I'd say dozens of them that have been constant users. We've tried to support them, and our plan is to integrate a delegation system for our users, um, for our referrals, and even some of our other users, right? Uh, for those that are low in um, in the hive power rates, in the you know like the ability to make transactions and stuff like that, I go through the list every once in a while to see who's really really low, maybe stuck and not able to make transactions. And it's not too often I see like the red color. If you ever go into that, which um, like I don't know if you've seen this, but if you go into wallets. And you go, there will be a there will be a message every time someone you referred joins from Hive on board, and we have added the ability to click 
directly onto their name or go into the referrals page. Um, so if we go into this, this is one of the newest people and even just in three hours he's already got three, um, three posts, which is impressive that he was able to do three posts, but he's down to 0.79%. So uh, the delegation system should help. Uh, those are some of the things, because if we bring in one of these users that has millions of followers on different platforms, maybe only, you know, thousands or hundreds, even just hundreds, will come to their post, but we want them to be able to interact. These aren't content creators. These are people that want to interact with a content creator, which is a big part of what we're hoping to focus on in the future, right? So uh, that's kind of the idea behind marketing growth and retention and onboarding. And the question with um, trying to onboard new users is, so Victoria asked this question, Trying to onboard new users is hard when to explain how the hive works, all the info someone must consume to understand it. Have you guys thought about making a start page for new users with tutorials, videos, and maybe even a chat for people to ask questions and stuff like that? So that's many subjects in one um, from Victoria. But uh, that is on our, on our roadmap for pretty soon. Um, to, I mean, we want to do it as soon as possible. We've got a few other things we're going to do sooner, and that is to improve more and more that new user experience. So delegating it so that they don't have transaction issues and um, doing the, what we call a learning mode and also helping a new user saying, hey, what topics are you interested in? And so that's why we'd love to see topics attached to communities. I would love to see that. I would also love to see topics attached to badges and topics attached to a couple other things that we're going to do. So that when that new user says, hey, I'm interested in um, cryptocurrencies and baseball and uh, California, whatever, you know, like, so we can connect them with things that we think may be of interest to them and maybe to people that may be of interest to them. So. There's an answer to part of that question. Um, the learning mode is kind of our tutorial video um, system. And uh, later on down the line, I will, uh, Asgard's gonna talk a little bit more about chat as well. So, um, uh, and Hive QA just said that'd be cute, cool for sure. Glad you guys um, would like that. Again, if you have any questions related to the present topic or the upcoming topic, for me to back up for a second, let me know. Um, there, the questions were pretty, there was quite a few, so uh, we're good if not. Um, uh, analytics, um, like I mentioned, we have uh, been steady. It has never really gone down since we started back in March. It's uh, consistently been steady or up. Um, uh, and uh, there's, you know, not sure where else to go with that. So we're going to go to the next question. Um, and I guess part of that is I don't, like, we just have never gone very specific analytics. So I don't think I'm starting. User data. Asgarth, I'm going to ask the question and uh, if you want to answer this, okay? Dr. Dr. Nishe asks, I'm curious if PeakD team plans to make user data publicly accessible or create some aggregated data site. I don't know if I completely understand this question because we don't keep user data, really. We look at the blockchain to provide user data. The one user data that we do share is, well, I mean, the, the most recent one that we have shared and put emphasis on is the view counts of posts. Um, on your profile, you can see the view count of your post if you go into uh, um, you go into the tools and then you go into analytics and then you click on views. Tools, analytics, and views, you'll see your own and then we'll show publicly those that are hit above 50 
views. So definitely we're going to do a higher emphasis on views. It is going to be visible. But to answer the rest of that question, you maybe have any insights, Asgar? Honestly, I'm not sure about this question either, but uh, uh, also I'm not sure if we are, uh, if we can share all the data we, we collect from the analytics, because that will probably require some uh, specific consent from, the, from our users. Uh, but I really need to understand this better towards the uh, dimension, because right now we are using the of the analytics data on the website, so part of those data are already public, and the uh, user can uh, have specific details about their posts in their dashboard, so also that is something that uh, users can do themselves, but uh, uh, not sure that what, what we should share other than what we are already doing, so it's, it's not completely up to how to work. Um, okay, so let's combine a great buzz on Discord said don't skip analytics. So let's combine analytics with the question someone asked about growth. Are you satisfied with user growth? And then combine that with analytics, and uh, which I suppose to us is mostly view count and stuff like that. Like, are you satisfied with growth? Like, no, like, it's not going up a lot if that's what you want to know. Like, there's not a lot of growth throughout Hive, nor on Peak D, but we're not worried about it because we have large marketing plans and we accept the concept that if we're not doing a lot of marketing that we shouldn't expect a lot of huge growth. Um, but there should be things that we could do to get, like big content creators, but not just big content creators, great community organizers, people that know how to really build communities. Where are they at? You know, they're over on Reddit or on Facebook groups or where are they at and are they satisfied or or is there someone in that like, hey, like this guy's got it all handled, but I'd love to build the same similar sort of group somewhere else. Those are the people like we have Hive users that, oh, there's a feature. I want to do that. But there's people out in the world that are specifically great at getting communities together. They aren't presently that much on Hive or on PD specifically. Um, uh, but if we got them here, um, then uh, I'd expect those communities to do really well. We see actually, I was looking the other day, we see good numbers on some of these communities, not just the number of posts or the rewards they get but lots of views on a lot of posts. And so some Hive Mind community users or organizers do a pretty decent job. Um, we need more and more of those. And a great buzz says pro content creators will expect an analytics suite. That's, that's true. So um, that's probably something that these friends of mine will start saying, hey, how do I know I'm doing well? <laughs> And uh, we'll work with them, see what they need and what we can provide to them. Um, yeah. Okay. So, next question. Uh, DHF plans, NJAR, NGAR, NYAR, whatever. With you guys behind being within a hair's reach of passing the threshold to start receiving DHF, fun DHF funds, Will you guys be making a push to get those last couple of votes? Well, Asgar, do you want to respond to uh, what happened about, what was it, 40 minutes ago? <laughs> uh, we we checked this uh, just uh, because uh, we stopped and uh, we passed the account of the we passed 40 minutes ago. So We'll see for uh, how long we stay, we stay there, but right now the proposal is uh, in the public and it will be great. So we'll, we'll see, because uh, a few months ago we have been uh, there too, but uh, it doesn't last for uh, more than one month, so it's something that uh, we'll, we'll see and we'll plan uh, on this as time goes on. 
Okay, so this is interesting because we've been talking about making a couple of changes to the user interface for the proposals. We, we were very close to, um, what would you call that, the return proposal, like we were just under the funding, so we weren't getting any funding for a while, and we were very, very, very close, and so we were talking about them, like, hey, we should do some upgrades to the proposal system, we'd like to see the number of actual votes that each person is getting, or each... Oh, sorry, I went off for a little while, and I was muted. So, sorry about that. Okay, so this is very interesting. I'll just repeat everything I just said. Um, we were very close to the proposal for a little while, so we've been talking about this, um, about uh, updating our proposal, which we actually did like four or five hours ago, just kind of coincidence, I guess, and updating the proposal user interface. Uh, for example, showing the number of votes each proposal is getting, we see the amount of vote value, but it'd be really interesting to see the votes, and we love that because we have a lot. We have a lot of votes, and we have a lot of you to thank. We have just crazy amounts of votes. I don't know if it's as much as every other proposal combined, but I'm just joking. Probably not. <laughs> but we have a lot of votes. We just don't have a lot of big votes. Um, some of the big votes we have also vote for the proposal, so it doesn't really kind of negates itself to a certain extent. Um, but if you want to check it out, we updated um, the proposal because, I mean, we did this back when it was Steam, and then we updated it when we moved to Hive, and then I did a big, huge update today, changing a lot of stuff, um, including uh, a new list of things that we worked on in 2020. Um, so I'm going to screenshot that. Just the ones that came to mind or that I could easily find, not counting the dozens of smaller things, so I'm going to put that in chat as well. Um, and our basic concept of the DHF, what we ask basically is do you think we'll bring value to the, oops, let's say Steam, the Hive ecosystem, and you're willing to give a vote to help accelerate what we can do. So during the time that it was funded, which I went back and looked, we were funded from, I wrote it down here, from March 3rd to May 5th. So it was 62 days, I think, that we were funded. Um, we put a decent amount of that into a development um, competition that Marky Mark ran. Um, and the rest, we, uh, like, we still have a lot of that that we expect and want to put into uh, working with other developers or working on uh, future marketing. Those are the two big ones. Um, but also during that time that it was funded, there was a heavy, like we felt the need to put extra, extra time into, um, into the site. So there was a lot done between March and May. Um, uh, the summer was a little more uh, difficult for both and Asgard, he had his kids home during the pandemic in Italy, and uh, <laughs> there was a lot of travel going on as well. Uh, anything else you want to say about that? Okay, cool. And if anyone else has any questions, that's great. So we can do we can do a lot with the uh, high fund. We can also wait to strike when the moment's, you know, hot, like, um, and this kind of leads into the next question, which is business plans. Long term, are you guys planning, so Injar asked, long term, are you guys planning to generate revenue from running Peak D to cover costs and earn from it? How are you guys, and then Hype Trending, how are you guys doing in terms of business sustainability? In terms of business sustainability, we're great. Like, we cover our costs every month and don't have to touch um, the decentralized hide funding system. So we are net positive, it's not a lot, it wouldn't, it wouldn't cause me or Asgard to go full time or to hire even someone really part time, but we cover our costs quite well. Um, you guys also voted for the 
uh, search thing, uh, the search feature that was being created by, oh, crap, who's that? Who does that one? So that was a decent uh, part of our, our cost as well, and now he's made that free because it's being covered by the, um, the Hive Fund. Um, and uh, what's that? Say that again. Yeah. Um, uh, and okay, so this, so we also started promotions, so decentral like a, a promotion system, uh, and we put this. Um, so yeah, we're skipping down, I guess, a few uh, questions. This relates to promotion feature, right? Um, the promotion feature, you've probably seen them, they only exist in two sections of the website. Well, one section of the website, the topic pages. So this is uh, any random topic page that you go to, which you probably know as tags, or the what we would call the all topics page, which is the page that has all the topics in there what some people call the trending. The trending is the name of the algorithm that it is usually sorted by. So the all topics page is sorted by the trending algorithm, unless you change that to the hot algorithm. Um, so this, what some people would call trending algorithm page, there, you'll see promotions there as well. So anytime you see that, the idea behind that is we, we wanted people to be kind of like excited because when they see it, they know that Hive was burned for that promotion to be there, and that benefited us a little bit. So everyone um, is benefited a little bit from promotion, and then we are also benefited as well um, uh, with half of that going to us. Um, I mean, you can look in the wallet, see what that's like. It's not a lot um, presently, um, but if you compare it to any other site that has how many users does Hive have these days? 20, 30, 40,000? Um, can you guys hear me? I, I, don't, I hope I didn't disconnect. Okay, great. Okay, because um, my spreadsheet is saying reconnecting, and that's why I asked. Okay, so, uh, but if you compare that to another site that only has that amount of people, it's pretty decent. We also have available promotions on communities. So one of the future questions that we have is, what would be the future development for the, promo the promotion feature? And that was asked by Dr. Nishe, or Dr. Nick, I don't know. Um, I, that is a big focus for me personally in the future, is to, is to get communities excited about promotion. So let's, I am a photographer, so let's say I develop a photography community with 10,000 photography users. That would be a lot for us on Hive, but like not that many for a, a Reddit community, right? But that's 10,000 people that are interested in photography and buying cameras, and I could go to um, photography stores that I have contacts with, for example, and say, hey, there's 10,000 or maybe there's 50,000 users that all interact in this community, you should go into the community and uh, write a post and then promote it and just like keep promoting it maybe, talking about your store or your photography product, your, your app, your whatever it is that you would want to promote um, and they could promote inside the community and the community owner can decide where those funds go, like part of it will go to Peak D for providing the feature, but they can decide, they can say, oh yeah, this is great, you know, like, this is why I'm putting so much time into it, because I get to earn a little bit. Or maybe they say it goes into a pool that they're going to distribute to all the users themselves, and they can kind of figure out that sort of thing. So um, that's what I see in the future for promotion feature. Um, okay. So back to uh, the some other feature discussion, the most viewed algorithm. Uh, I, can, I see you add a new algo on the Explorer. I like the most viewed part because there are a lot of good little users to see 
and to vote and to comment, but I missed the reset of the blockchain posts. Okay, so this question is maybe a little bit harder. English may not be the first language, but I think what they're asking is, I love the new most viewed, but I'd like to also see those that I can vote on. And some of the older, like you go into the most viewed in the last week or something, which is what it defaults to, and we have some upgrades coming for the most viewed system, which that was kind of our initial release, and we're gonna add some things. But if you look there, there are some older posts that are the most viewed, and you can't vote on them because they're past the seven day threshold. So maybe, Asgarth, is there a way to do a, a, a filter so that they can people can see only those that they can vote on? Maybe they wanna go there and like, hey, I'm looking for good content to vote on. I want to vote on stuff that is bringing people to Hive, that is, people are actually reading, not just topics I like, but like, are they, are people actually coming here to read stuff? If so, that I want to reward. So what do you think? Uh, I think that we can have this. I don't want to add too many options to the page, but the, the, we can add a, a bit of the depth to the post that I share as well published in the past seven days. So it's something we can add uh, easily, but uh, not, not sure it's uh, something that we need so much because uh, right now we already have the warnings and are uh, about to, to afford the post. Yeah. So it's very important if you just want to see some uh, nice posts or something uh, that you should be able to do in the next page. We can also add the filter stuff. I'm not sure it will be used so often, but that's a good time to um, I will I will give an example of what um, I have been doing with the Peak D account and our vote. I will go to that page, and each day I'll look at the most popular post from the day before, um, and I will give votes to several of those top ones because that obviously is providing, like that is something we can, cons I consider as being of great worth to Hive and us, pers you know, us personally, our account personally. Um, I'd love to see, like that'd be fun if other people did that as well. Um, and one of the ideas that I would like to throw out to see what people think is maybe we can have a cutoff, like uh, just based on Greenwich median time, whatever, and and each day uh, kind of say like this, who had the most views this previous day? And, um, and then maybe some sort of uh, hall of fame of sorts of like, here was the most viewed post every day, you know, like the last 30 days or 300 days, like you're just looking back at the history of, of Hive and Peak D and seeing what the, what people were, were viewing the most. I guess the Hall of Fame could also show the most rewarded for that same time. I don't know how easy that would be. But, um, interesting curation strategies. I'll try it out myself. That's Hive Training asking that, or, or mentioning that. Okay, uh, I love this concept of, of um, encouraging and, and rewarding and, and, and motivating, I guess is the, is the way to say it motivating people to actually come in, view their content. Marky, the Marky Mark wrote a post about, hey, this is what I got out of it. Hey, you wrote something. Have you thought about actually sharing it? <laughs> Have you thought about actually promoting it? Getting it out there to communities and into places that people are interested in the subject you wrote about. Um, you wrote about politics or something, you know, the uh, something trending. He showed like, hey, you can look on these other sites, what's trending there, write about that subject and put it back onto Twitter, for example, um, and bring people over. I know that when I, I did a post about bears the other day, and then, um, what was it, two days ago, I did a post about, oh, just, being up here in the, in the mountains and things that are going on in my life. So the things that are going on in my life, 
I put on into Facebook because those are people that I'm friends with that may want to look to know about things that are going on in my life. And that hit like the one of the top posts, most viewed posts for the day because I took my content and put it somewhere that people were interested in. And uh, a while back I did one about fall colors and then I posted it onto a Facebook group that is talks all about fall colors in Utah. They're kind of people like, hey, how are the fall colors doing? And that like was one of the most viewed for the month um, because a lot of people came over. So, um, uh, And then so the question is how would Oh, okay. We'll answer that a little bit later because we're going to move. Okay, so oh, how would the Hall of Fame handle multiple languages? Well, languages in general is something that we still have on the roadmap to do. Uh, again, one of those things similar to mobile that we'd love to see some more um, development. We're getting real close now uh, before we jump into that. And we have a lot of people that have volunteered to help translate and uh, just kind of digging out the time to, for Asgard to kind of work on that project a little bit more. Um, okay, good extra question. Uh, I don't know how it would be necessarily different or difficult to handle multiple languages. I think that in general, Hive needs to handle multiple languages better. We saw or we presently see what is happening on Steam where it's basically converted to another language. And, and for me, and this is probably what a lot of other people speaking other languages have experienced for a long time, but, they, but I go in there and, and, oh, I don't speak Korean, so what good is it here? It would be great if the metadata of a post could, uh, could show what the main language of this post is. And then um, someone that works with Hivemind could also work in that field, I suppose, because that's probably going to have to do with Hivemind. Um, is that correct, Asgard? Yes, that would be nice. Right now, we think if we have the information in the post metadata, we will not be able to use it uh, to create a custom feed. So, Mind will have to be upgraded from the grid, but it's something that would be very nice because at that point we can see the user information and it will be much faster for us to build the uh, feeds and uh, training and the uh, whole of training for multiple members. So let's get the, uh, those that work on Hivemind excited and interested and talk about maybe adding a Adding that to Hivemind, we can easily add it into our user interface. We'd do it and I mean, we'd have it done by the end of tomorrow if, if someone was motivated to get up to, to Hivemind. Um, uh, we could put the, the language there. So if it's not on Hivemind and it's not coming from the API operators, what essentially we would have to do is pull everything and use a filter, which means we may be pulling hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of posts just to find you two, just to filter down to what, two Japanese posts that are in those hundreds? So it's not really viable as a filter. It would have to be in the database in the hive mind. It's, it's not worth going to work. We can just show a, a little label in the, in the post itself, but uh, only when we open the, the post to read it. So it's, uh, it's not useful to build a feed. Let's go to. A very, like people, I had three people ask about this. I was wrong about the other one. I only had two earlier from a, a, the mobile question. So the most asked question ends up being about messaging and chat. Bartman67, SDRV5, Victoria BSB, all asked about chat. So the first question was, are you planning to introduce BChat on Peak D? Would make it so much more social. My sister asked, is there going to be a chat feature soon since I have never really used Discord? So maybe we're talking to the choir here, but there are plenty of people that don't use Discord and a decent amount of people that I'm sure have never even heard of Discord. They're just normal people that aren't techie. So the last question was now with Beach Hat on Showroom and Lindsay, you guys, 
you guys look to look into implementing it on Peak D, because that would be awesome. She said, Victoria does. So I'm going to leave this to Asgard to answer this one as well. Uh, uh, actually, this is something we are, we are already discussed, and it's something that we would like to do in the coming days. So we will start working on this uh, in uh, a few weeks, and hopefully we'll have the uh, first version uh, available uh, in one month or so, before the end of the year. So this is absolutely something we would like to have uh, soon. Okay. So, my question to you guys listening and that wanted messaging, please, I would help us so much to get this done if you can make a post or message us or put it on the Discord with the, the different ways that you see messaging being really viable to you. Like, okay, we get it, you want to message your friend, but what other things, like what are some specific cases of of needs or wants, you know, just like how is mess? How else can we integrate it? You know, like um, are there other things besides just uh, the idea I had the other day is like there's a lot of uh, um, accounts that people go and squat, but maybe someone comes in and wants that account. Like, could they message the owner of that account, perhaps? Like. Like things like that. So I'd love to hear a little bit more at because we're gonna be designing what we would want. Like is it a widget on the bottom right hand corner or is it a page for it? Or or do you have any examples of of places that do messaging well? Um, do you use Lindsay IO that has integrated B chat and you you have some suggestions of how it could be different or how it could be the same? Um, or, okay, so HiveQA says um, maybe delegating to a friend through messaging. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, and he also says add Hive onboarding so we can walk them through it via chat. So is there going to be like a group of people that are standing by to help new people? Like, so a new person comes in and it says, hey, do you want help from an experienced user? Is that what you're asking? Or you're saying you're going to help your friend? Yeah, so, yeah, your friend. Okay, so I'm, I'm reading the Discord and, and interacting. And then um, sending, money, uh, sending a memo directly from the blog interface would be good, too. So I'm sending a memo directly from the blog interface. A memo like a wallet memo or sending them a message directly from the blog interface so I assume when you're on someone's profile there'll be a message button right but I think you mean something more than that um, and then Marco is asking about okay there's a lot of commentary about messaging which is interesting um, and uh, he's asked he's, he's mentioning the idea of group chat messages in communities. Okay, which is be chat support that. I guess we will be figuring that out. And it seems like a lot of interest around this. <laughs> Asgard, is that what you what are you feeling now, Asgard? What do you think now? Uh, I, I, it's something that I was expecting actually because it's one of the things that we have delayed for quite some time, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it right now. Okay. Just give us some ideas of how it could be uniquely integrated besides just going to someone's profile, hitting the message button, and it sends them a message. Like, or maybe that's all you want, or that's all we should start with. And HiveQA just wrote, we need to start pushing people out of Discord to our own Hivean related properties. I do agree with that. And it is a valid point that my sister mentioned she doesn't use Discord at all, never. And so, to message, she ha you know she has an issue. I mean, she could call me, I guess, but like, so sometimes she'll message uh, Asgard by email, you know, where she could maybe just send him a quick message. 
then the question comes like, how do we avoid message overwhelm? So, anyway. Um, uh, okay. Should we go to the next subject of open source, or we have more questions about messaging? Marco says maybe something like you tried to do with bridging Discord to communities page, but do it with Hive Messenger. Um, Hive Trending said I'm a BChat noob. Is the data on chain or custom JSON? I don't know. Do you know? I don't think it's a JSON. Uh, I don't think it's uh, stored on, uh, on chain. It will be only uh, quite process intensive to store all the messages on the chain and probably also uh, something that it's uh, not going to be used for a long time. Most of those messages will just be used for chat and uh, the rapid again. So uh, I don't think it's on chain, but for sure you need to be able to Login or at least to sign the message with your keys to use the chat. So it's uh, similar to when you log in on uh, with the hosting key and you sign the login message. I mean, if a okay, so someone else, thank you for the um, insights to how BChat may work. Um, if someone, maybe we'll have to on the next AMA get someone to from that system to explain it a little bit better. Um, but someone said, uh, someone was repeating what HiveQ had said about helping new users. Um, and so an idea, an example of this is maybe there is a community that is all for helping that and we were to integrate um, chat into that community and then find maybe a way to push new users to directly to that tab for the you know for new user questions right so that there was a bunch of us that knew to go to that community and look for those questions often eh, it's an idea and we're we're learning that maybe there's a 90 day history on this chat Um, and then HiveQ says, Darby, you know your FAQ system you built, we can use the links, we can do, we can push the links to them via their questions. So it's not necessarily walking through everything, but maybe we just know where to find the answers that are already written down for the user. And okay, here, so here we go. Lots, lots of interest on messaging. I guess it was awesome we did AME because I was like, I, I want to do some of these other things first, but I'm listening. So I probably messaging moves up a couple notches. But let's make it interesting instead of just saying hi to your friend that you would have messaged anyways on Discord. So, okay. Open source question from Dolls was, are you planning to open source Peak V? Um, I'm going to have Asgarth primarily answer this, I think. So it's not just me chatting so much. But I want to ask first a question to those that ask us that. What do you believe are the benefits to us for open sourcing Peak V? Like what are what are some of those? Yeah, I guess that's the main question. Um, uh, yeah. So. Okay, Sergio, you want to go or you want to go for it? Yeah, but probably uh, I will just say what we have uh, already explained. Uh, we are not sure about the benefits and of course certainly some uh, drawbacks and uh, it's not easy for us to evaluate this correctly at the moment because we are still trying to understand what's the best way to accomplish our, our goal. So it's not that we don't want to do it and we never do it. It's more like we have not decided and the only safe uh, option right now is open source so we can uh, we are free to move in the direction that 
we want and uh, also maybe we'll be able to open source parts of the system going on. So it's uh, uh, maybe not the whole website, but maybe we'll be able to open source part of it. This is something yeah. we have planned in the past month when uh, our proposal has been uh, funded. Uh, but we actually laugh when we say we are when we left the support for the proposal, but maybe we'll be able to, to start this again now. Um, okay, so one of the things we were planning on doing, and it's still on one of our tickets, is to open source separately the PLOC code. Um, it's, it, it is important that we show things like that, that we require, like, at this moment, peak log takes a little bit of trust in us, which we, you know, like, it's fine, because we give them every reason to trust us, uh, but if we were to put the code out there, people can verify it and stuff like that and feel very comfortable with peak log, but then everyone felt totally comfortable and no one had any problems with it, so it really wasn't high on our list and we're doing all these other features. Um, one of the other things, and I think Marco brought up the, the gist of it, is um, what happens if we were to leave or to be done or um, that sort of thing, like um, some sort of, like could there be some sort of understanding between peak team and the community at large like we're not going to leave like is that what the what people are wondering about like don't leave do what some of these other people did and move to a different chain you know like could there but there's a there's a there's a perhaps even easier option to that is a third party that acts as a, a sort of a this is my own little random thing not saying that this is what we're going to what we're going to do because we don't know exactly how we would do it but like an intermediary that we that, that the hive community trusts and that we trust and like basically it's like a, like hey if we were ever to um i'm giving an example of a of a of a possible argument um and but the, the solution would just be like we'll give it to a third party that if we ever left they have the complete right to uh, open source it anyway you know that sort of thing that is a lot about open source <laughs> anything else okay but we'll go to we've already talked a little about promotion feature um, basically, and then someone asked about ads. Do you have any plans of introducing ads? Also, can you hear me again? Okay, my uh, hotspot apparently died on me. I'm on my phone. It's probably even better audio. So, what did we discuss? Did we go over another one? Okay, yeah, um, uh, ads, 
What's the next theme? Promotion and ads, and we kind of talked about ads a little bit. Do you have any plans? It just, but the ads question was specifically by uh, occupation. Do you have any plans of introducing ads to increase your revenue? Um, we use promotions, and we have specifically put promotions into the topic feeds. Nowhere else on the site, just the topic feeds. So is there a question, do we want to put promotions other places? We have no plans of putting them other places except for community. Well, it's already in community feeds. Um, and, but that's a decision of the community, not us. We are not taking that decision upon us. It is the decision of the community. They can go into their settings and turn it on. But then it's up to them, perhaps, to promote people doing promotions in their community. Are we against putting ads in different places? No, but like none of the places that we have presently do we consider there being promotions or ads or anything like that. Like maybe we create future things that are like this is a perfect example for ads or or maybe in the future the user for their profile, maybe they're getting tens of thousands of views to their profile and to their posts um, each month. Maybe the user could have that decision of putting it somewhere, but us, Peak D, deciding for everyone else, that's not really on our roadmap right now. You know, like we haven't thought about that. We want, we love this idea of people deciding for themselves, deciding for their community that they own, deciding, you know, for their, their place that they have a say for. Um, uh, putting it on topics for us is great. Maybe on communities, people could com promote their community. That's another cool one. But uh, so that's my thoughts on ads and promotions. So I assume everyone can hear me fine, right? So great. So next question: features that should be known more. This is a fun like softball question. What are cool features that you wish people, more people know know about or knew about? Yeah. What are, some, what are cool features that you wish more people would know about? I'd love to see those. I, I will shout out whoever puts that down. I'm going to list off a few of mine. Asgarth, you have a few ready to share. Um, uh, I wish more people knew about promotions. That's cool. Um, the countdown timer. I feel like those that run competitions, events, radio shows, I think they know about the countdown. The, those that would use the countdown timer probably know about it, so that's probably not the best example. What else do I wish that they knew about? Um, do you have anything off the top of your head? Uh, I guess community owners, uh, it would be nice if they knew about the, the features that they can, the extra features in community. Mm. Let's see, author, oh, oh I, I hope everyone knows about when you are creating a draft that you, you really should give it a short description because that impacts your SEO and how it is displayed on other websites like Twitter and Discord and Reddit. Um, you can also, if you have an account that multiple people use, then putting an author on there is a great thing to do. I should have prepared for this. Um, user lists, like these uh, private user lists, Uh, we've seen more traction on badges, which is cool, and we'd like to do a lot more work on, on really increasing the functionalities of badges. I'd like to, um, but there's more and more badges being used, which is cool. Um, 
Um, uh, oh, here's a here's a fun one. In Wallet, you can claim Hive token accounts if you have like over five thousand. Well, it's probably like over three thousand Hive power. And then you can also create accounts in that same dropdown in Wallets um, when you have tokens. You'll say use one of these tokens. Um, uh, Injar said, Nodes benchmark tool is neat. So many people saying they're having issues and they don't know they can just benchmark and find a better node. Um, there is a question I believe about nodes, or there should be. Is that on our list? Oh, no, it wasn't. But nodes has been a big question for us constantly. Like, why isn't this working? Nodes. Why isn't this working? The answer is nodes. Um, I'd like to. I guess read what I wrote the other day about nodes to help people understand that perhaps a little bit better. Let me find that that text in the Discord. I wrote um, something about nodes. Oh, maybe it was a while back. I can't find it now. The, the basic concept is that it... it Oh, are you? Awesome. I'm back, by the way. Can you hear me? Okay. You're sharing in the channel, so let me go to that. Uh, uh, well, okay, so the concept is on Steam, or on uh, Peak D, you go to settings and you can choose your preferred node. That node determines what we will use to find information from the blockchain for you. It does not determine what you, you use to put information onto the blockchain. That is determined by what you use to log in. There are three methods, Hive Signer, Keychain, and Peak Lock. Now, Peak Lock, we control, so it also uses that same node that you used in settings. But Hive Keychain, for example, has its own selection system for what node you would like to use to put information onto the blockchain, to vote, to make a post, to... Uh, to claim rewards, to stuff like that. You are doing a transaction, adding information to the blockchain. That is decided by the system you use to log in. We do not do it. Peak D does not do that. It is the login system. We happen to have a login system, Peak Lock, uh, but most people, like myself, use Keychain, which is awesome. Except if I'm on mobile, I use Peak Lock. So. That, I think, would help people. That's something, uh, that's what I want people to know. <laughs> so, and then the Hive says over 4.4 thousand Hive power right now to claim a, a free account token. So, uh, is there any other, uh, are we gonna move to the next question, but if anyone has uh, any other features that you think other people should know about, please. We'd love to mention those more. I'd love to see more people using promotions as well. That's fun. Um, referrals we talked about. Um, I would say bookmarks, but I hope for a large upgrade to that whole system. My question for you is, um, would you like the word better bookmarks? Uh, never mind, I'll ask that later. Uh, I just love the collections, curated collections. Uh, anyways, um, and having them be public as well. Okay, so Marco says, on the totally different subject, search options, especially on search for community, does nothing for me. Is it me or is it everyone? Uh, the issue is that you have to hit enter or click the little uh, magnifying glass, maybe. Let me know if that fixes it, I guess. 
Search is another thing that will get an update because there are multiple things to search and sometimes you don't want to search all things. Maybe you're just wanting to search a user name. Or maybe you want to search posts. Posts take a lot of search time and resources. So maybe you're searching other things like in the search bar you want to search for you want it to search badges, communities, users, but you're not like you're not interested in searching posts. Yeah. And he's saying that search isn't working for him particularly. We'll look into that. And we'll work on search too. Um, okay. Uh, but there was an actual question about search. Are you considering a full text search on PeakD.com Peak website? Yeah, I mean, in addition to the current topic keyword username search, it would really open up the content on the site, in my opinion. Asgard, how's oh, that technically feasible? I'm guessing it's not greatly feasible. But let me know. was out for one second, but as long as no questions for me, let's move on. User lists, is sharing a list, so Sanji VM says, is sharing a list on the roadmap? So lists are lists of users which are uh, private at the, at the moment. So the question is sharing a list of these users publicly on the roadmap. Uh, Definitely something that would be, I would, I would, I would enjoy. I think would be good. Um, it's, I don't know if it's heavily desired, uh, and I don't know if it's difficult. That would be as far as the answer to that question, I suppose. So, did you respond to the NFT question? <laughs> okay. The NFT question is uh, about like the, the NFT showroom uh, talks about making a tab for artists, photographers showcase their work for sale on the site. I would be interested. There's a whole section that we, I mean, our our wallet section is created to be able to expand to integrate other projects of things that have value, like wallet value, you know, NFT is supposedly, uh, or, uh, they do have value, right? Uh, they're buried, obviously, uh, like a fungible token that you can kind of get an idea from the sale of the previous one. But I, I would love to see stuff in there. I feel like those that are work on NFTs, if they want us to integrate, they like we'd love to chat with them. Um, you feel like that's a fair thing to say? Like, let's get someone that can help us create this pro feature um, and, and some interest, I suppose, right? The next one comes from. Yusuf Harun Khan. 
possibility to start a country representative or ambassador theme to community people. What do you say if we have, I bring this opportunity to select one or more of the, um, okay, yeah, so country ambassador, I feel like this has, this is one of those things, most of this stuff is on our roadmap already. This one, we have not put any thought into we would love to see someone flesh that idea out a little bit more and, and give us some ideas of why that would be helpful and how it would be helpful. And whether or not this is something that the Hive community can do, and to what extent a uh, user interface like us can do this or support them. You're from a different country than, you know, Sergio, what do you think of this? Do you? I don't I don't use any social medias. Let's say this. I don't use any social media that has an ambassador. So I don't know what this looks like. So what if I mean could something like this work? Like topics? Can we help people understand who the most popular, most viewed, or maybe even most rewarded, or most commented on, uh, some algorithm of some combination of that, maybe most viewed, uh, content creators for different topics, right? Like, uh, these people have the most viewed posts in photography topic and then connect people to those people? Um, and then can they do the same thing with languages or countries? Or does a community handle this? Why, like, could there be communities for each? Well, he's asking country representative. Could there be a community for each country? And, and then you've kind of got some moderators and voices, like, could it be decentralized that way? And Guilty Party says, most active on Catterday. <laughs> yes. You want to, do you, what do you guys want? Would you rather see, if that was something, would you rather see who, who posts the most, who earns the most, who actually has the most views, who actually has the most interactions on Peak D, meaning we look to see who actually clicks the vote button, not who automates it, who actually comments, not who automates it, again. Like, so interactions, views, rewards, content. What would, what to you would signify uh, someone of interest in a topic that you're interested in? There's another question that I'm reading here. Question, how a community gets featured on the list of featured communities by Peak D? Uh, that is me going in maybe once a month and following it with an account called Peak Feature. And as soon as that account follows that community, it is on that featured thing. So uh, I kind of just wanted a variety. I wanted the ones that, um, that we did, because it's on it's PD, PD wants to feature it, and some unique ones to give people an idea of what kind of communities exist out there. And I do, I mean, it'd be better to, um, it's better to have more interesting, unique sorting mechanisms to communities, but that doesn't exist right now. And it's something that we can't necessarily it's not best. Do, it's not best done by just Peak D. It'd be really it better done if it was more integrated into the community and Hive Mind features. Is that correct, Asgard? <laughs> Good. Well, at least I'm not telling them lies. Um. Uh. I was not here from the start. Did you talk about how views work? Because my views are depressing.
I think this goes back to our discussion about um, user growth and analytics and, uh, and, and, and now views, right? Like, it's true. Like, there's, we are a, a community of a lot of content creators that, in general, aren't good at finding viewers. We don't promote our stuff a lot. We don't work hard for a consistent readership. Um, we don't. We didn't have it maybe somewhere else and come with it. We came here fresh and new, wanting to create something, hoping for a viewership. And it is correct, not a lot of posts get a lot of views. And yet you're still getting a lot of rewards, which is crazy. <laughs> People are getting like four or five dollars for a post that no one's reading. How lucky are you guys? Just think about that. Try to like see the positive in that. You're creating these posts that you're not pushing people to, and you don't have a big user base, and yet you're art, you're making all this money from these posts. But yes, we want to have views, but I think that's a matter of maybe getting people in here that know how to get views and learning from them, doing some of those things, and increasing our user base so that there's some of this trickle content creators reading other content creator views that we're seeing. So, Also, that view count does not include High Flog or Leo Finance or any of the other uh, Tribe pages or Essency or Dappler or, or any of those, just PP. So maybe be less, as you would say, depressed um, by recognizing that that number is likely much higher. Ah, there you go as well. Cool. Yeah, and uh, there's probably a lot of brave users out there. This is the environment, the type of people that probably you raise a lot. <laughs> and, oh, analytics, by the way, it's we, I, I'd say it's about 60% desktop, 40% mobile. Someone wants to know, and, uh, oh, I still don't have the Wi-Fi on my laptop. Okay. Yeah, it's, we should be updating the messaging for views to help people recognize some of these things. It doesn't include all the other places that people could read this, and it doesn't include Brave Browser. Maybe we should not be saying you have exactly these amount of views. We should say you have more than this amount of views. <laughs> yeah. Or around this amount. Okay. Okay, we're down to um, like last couple of questions. They're just kind of uh, random different questions here. Why is there a difference in vote weight on Hive.blog and other portals? Um, Sergio, it's a more technical question. Why do you think there's a difference? Uh, what he's saying is screenshot the difference. Screenshot the one site compared to our site and, and go to our Discord and show us. And we'll check to see if it's a bug or not. Or what's happening. Maybe there's a bug on other sites. Uh, Hive Engine, Tribes related. 
would there be a good way to implement changing the upload stream for different tokens? Okay, so this is the tokens that you're referencing are for this third party called Hive Engine um, and their system called the Scott Bot, or I think that's what it's called. Uh, it's not a feature set on peak.com. Uh, we don't have any integration, and even if we did, I believe the answer to your question implement changing the upload stream would be completely on them. Like we don't, we wouldn't even have any influence on that. Uh, you can still add um, tribe topic or tags into your post. My recommendation, this is something that many people don't know, only the first five tags that you can write on Peak D will be used by the hive mind system to be shown on topic pages. Only the first five ta topics will be shown on topic pages. So if you're using these trigger tags that I call them, like for these hive engine tribes, use them after the first five because the hive engine tribe system will look at those remaining ones. But the hive mind system only looks at the first five tags. That's a fun little thing you guys, I don't know if everyone knew. So that's the end of the questions that were on the main post. We did tip all those questions, I believe. Maybe there's a couple at the end I didn't get tipped, but uh, we want to do this again. Let us know if you liked it. Um, and I'm going to look through, is there any other questions you see, Sergio, that we should ask, answer? So, someone asked, so what about posting to communities? Aren't they always the first tag? They, I, that's why I was specific and said, in our user interface, the first five tags are used. The community one is separate. What do they call that one? It's like a, it's, what, what, what was the word? Say that again? Category. It's a category. It's, it's kind of works like a, a topic, but it's more of a category. So it's not part of the first five topic or tags. Um, uh, so, so, so when someone says you have a small number of views, I will say all my readers use Brave. Yep. Um, at least. Oh, I have already. So Leona says you have at least in our thing. Okay, good. Um, uh, <laughs> Andrew says, good to know I'm not all of my own views. <laughs> Yeah, putting the views was fun and everything, but it also worried us that people would get a little dissuaded, but hopefully it just like encourages them to find a connection for their content to where people would actually love their content. And maybe building the types of communities that people aren't just like, here's a place where I'm gonna put my stuff, but here's a place where I know someone is going to love my stuff. That's a cool community. I want to put this here because I know people are interested. In I, I baseball playoffs are right now, and I go to the uh, the Padres. I grew up in San Diego. I go to the San Diego Padres Reddit. Man, I wish it was on a, on Hive and it would interact. And I would I eat up all the content, every post that is there. I eat it up. But is there a community like that for me on Hive? Are there content creators that are, is, is there topics like that that I'm like, everything? Well, there is like everything that's posted on the About Peak D community, Peak Monsters community. You know, I obviously have some interest in them and then other communities that I, you know, like maybe the Tesla community, I would eat up any, any content that was, you know, posted about that, even a Tesla truck. But now we're done with the we're, we're done with the questions. 
I rambled for a little bit. What do you think, sir? What do you think, Asgard? Are we uh, done? Anything else? 90 minutes for our first AMA? Not bad. Thanks, Hype QA. Made me feel like the 90 minutes was worthwhile. Excellent job, very helpful. Oh, great fun, says. Good job, guys. Hype training. I'm amazed at how much you guys accomplish. Thank you. No, actually, it is really good. <laughs> uh, I, pin feature is another thing I wish more people used. I love it. I use it for listening to my, for listing my index and confidence. Ooh, little engine index index. Cool. All right. I think we're going to finish this. Uh, whoever said that they were recording... Who knows if I was capable of recording it as I was up and down and stuff like that. We shall see. I wish we had a messaging system so they could message me, but I guess message me on Discord. <laughs> All right, Asgarth, you say the final words because I'm bad at ending. I will post this uh, tomorrow um, as a uh, as a video for auto recording, and uh, um, I will con I will hopefully include some of the questions that I asked. Let me see if that feedback is on. Thanks everyone again. Have a good day.